right, welcome back to the link, everybody. We are going to take our Zoom room over to Tizen, where our good friend Landon Idlet with the National Weather Service is standing by in what seems to be an ever-expanding enchanted forest of of Christmas trees, both real and artificial, and more LED lights than probably the government of Guam has. Yeah, this office is funded by uh, Home Depot, so thank you, Home Depot, for all the great <laughs> lights and decorations. And really, I have just not got around to decorating my house this year because I have been at the office so much. I'm running several conferences this week, and it's been 2 a.m., 3 a.m. mornings all this week going to in the evening hours, and I just don't have time to put up lights at home, but I do have a few. But you can see my office. I've had, I take a little break and I put up a couple hundred more lights and I take another break and put up some more stuff. So so basically what you're saying is, is you work these incredibly, brutally crazy hours at the most ungodliest of times and everything like that. So to, <laughs> so to pass the time, you actually, you actually decorate. You and Sabrina are like spirit animals. Yeah, I, I try to decorate once in a while. I'm trying to show you my desk. I don't know. Can we see it? There we go. Yeah, my desk is absolute chaos and I had to move all the papers off because I'm working so many different things right now and I have papers everywhere on the floor. I have clothes on the couch. You know, I need a housekeeper. So <laughs> yeah, hey, anybody? But, it pay it pays well. But, and as I understand it, you even the way you even roll up your Christmas lights is, you know, you're you're like the you're like the epitome of well organized. See when when I do that at the end of trying. the year. I, I just take them, I wind them up all around my arm, and I just throw them back into the closet. How, how, can I see yours? Like, how, how do you actually wind those? Let me see. I'm going to turn you around right quick. You just keep them. They're brand new lights, so you, wow. when you have the fold in them, you can just bend them right back up together and just bind them together, so it works pretty well. Um, so not bad at all, but it just takes time and diligence, and I'm running out of time and diligence. <laughs> and it also <laughs> happens to be a tad bit OCD. I mean... Uh, a little bit of that doesn't hurt. Yeah, a little bit of that does not hurt. And, of course, it's the end of the week, and I'm catching the flight out to New Orleans tomorrow morning, bright and early. I have a 4 a.m. teleconference tomorrow morning. And then once I finish that, pack up and go to the airport. So it's just right up to the last minute. But oh, Very nice. It's, it's December. What the heck? Well, hopefully yeah, as a lot of... As go you ahead. leave your island paradise and everything like that, um, you know, you, you'll be heading out to the bayou, of course. But is there any weather that you anticipate that we could be seeing in in your stead? Yeah. Yeah, there's actually a lot of weather out there. And when I turn you around to the radar, it's actually beautiful out there. And I've had so many emails and WhatsApp messages this last week, especially with all the Christmas events going on. A lot of worry and concern about the Christmas lighting event at uh, Skinner Plaza last night. And also in the CNMI, the governor had to cancel their lighting last week because of the weather and then it's much better yesterday and today and that's going to continue into saturday there is absolutely nothing out there a little bit the winds are up so you see that green the butterfly effect of the radar um that's a little bit of the wind of the sea spray up in the air we're right about uh, 10 to 15 mile per hour winds with some gusts higher up once in a while and that's going to be the theme through today and tonight and zooming out there is just absolutely nothing out there uh, with the dry wow. conditions large and in control and going to our infrared satellite yeah it's much the same we see a little bit of the 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 white color those are the cirrus clouds upper level clouds from the you could call it distant typhoon 27w i i call it the 27w marketer because it's a complicated name Nyato, i think that might be the name the Ooh, and that, that's that it. thing that left us but, a couple days ago right that's that thing that gave us several days of weather as it was pushing through Yikes. and so luckily it was slow to develop and now it's sitting northwest of us moving away but it's going to be like one of those bad relationships that eventually breaks up in the next uh, 48 hours because it's a category powerful typhoon with 145 mile per hour winds and it looks like it's going to be right about peak because it's showing some signs of weakening as it wraps around to our northwest but there's some long-term tendencies that it's going to curve around and go back toward the south and i'll get into that very shortly farther south the monsoon is kicking up across Palau and Yap State, but nothing like what was the case in October with Tropical Storm Kampasu in the Philippine Sea, which really wrecked Palau with uh, a lot of rainfall for over a week and damaging winds and stuff. So that's not the case down there, but showers and thunderstorms for them and west winds. Um, so go ahead and pull up the slides, Jason, and we're going to go right into the show and talk about what are we looking at for the weekend ahead and also next week. So the drier weather will definitely continue for the coming days. Uh, we have a small trough, a surface trough that will push through 
probably around sun, Saturday night into Sunday that's going to give us an uptick in showers and maybe a few more gusts of wind from the northeast, but nothing significant return back to drier weather by the start of the week. Typhoon Yetzo meanders northwest of Guam, and it could make a turn back toward the south, but again, this is nothing to be concerned about, and I'll get into those details very shortly. There is a high risk of rip currents. We have hazardous seas and surf across the region, and that's from several sources, the trade winds to our east, and also this typhoon to our northwest. We have waves coming from every direction. The Guam fire danger is low. Extreme drought continues for Kapinga Marenghi in far southern Pompeii State, and the monsoon struggles across western Micronesia. So the droughts slide, of course, abundant rainfall across all of the region except for Kapinga Marenghi. That's not going to change anytime soon, but they did have a decent rainfall around Thanksgiving, so that was some short-term mitigation. The next slide, the high risk of rip currents along east and north facing reefs from that large trade wind swell that could shift toward the northwest possibly in the coming days as a result of the strong winds whipping around the typhoon to our northwest and of course some precautions if you're caught in those rip currents know what to do if you're caught first off don't go out if you can't swim don't go out if we have hazardous surf and rip currents but if you do get caught in one break out of that current swim parallel to shore and come back over the reef uh, you don't want to do that because you'll be fighting the reef at that point. And so again, this is for north and east facing reefs on the next slide. So all these beaches from uh, the commercial port all the way up to Agania Bay, uh, Tuman Bay, and then up around the Tinian Beach are probably going to be closed today because of these hazards. And then all the way down the eastern side, including Paga Point, Marble Cave, Elig Bay, Jeff's Pirates Cove, Telefofo Bay, all those common areas for the hazardous surf. The next slide, this is showing the, the typhoon, that track. And if you look on the left image, you see this wind field, the, the red, the yellow, and the blue colors, that will be shrinking down because, again, it's going to be one of those bad relationships. It's going to fall apart very rapidly. Uh, it's going to be losing uh, its uh, structure because it's fighting a very harsh environment with the winter weather pattern in the North Pacific. It's going to be fighting a boundary, a cold frontal boundary to the North a lot of vertical wind shear that's going to rip it apart. But the low level circulation is what's going to be making that turn toward the southwest eventually in about 48 to 72 hours. At that point, it's going to be very weak and it's going to eventually meet its demise and dissipate. So again, it's going to make that turn likely, but this is not a threat to Guam and the CNMI. So keep that in mind. And Landon, it's that's, going to be ca- that's kind of interesting. Soon. Because as you as you've educated us here on the show, as well as our like our viewers and everything like that, storms tend to feed off energy and get stronger. In this case, you know, it's it's actually energy from surrounding systems that's literally ripping this thing apart. Yeah, we're we're kind of in that boundary between seasons. You have the the warm, moist tropical environment to the south, and then the the developing winter weather pattern in the North Pacific, and so we have that very strong cold frontal system up across. Actually, if you come to my camera, I'm going to show you what we're looking at. So this is the scatterometer showing those that hand analysis that we do twice a day. So that cold frontal boundary extending well down from the North Pacific, and then that comes right into the typhoon. And so this interaction is going to rip it apart. Um, it's just not a very good environment for the typhoon to survive. They want to modify their environment, keep it holistic to their own development. And once they get into the North Pacific, that's where they get into more hostility with the vertical wind shear, the upper level patterns, upper level winds, and it just does not do well in that environment. So that's to our um, good news. And so this is when we have these developing systems across the Mariana Islands, we're waiting for that vertical wind shear to decrease. That's when we expect things to start coming together as a system forms over our region. But usually that shear sometimes hold on longer than expected, and it just prevents Uh, the development in our region. So that's been a good uh, factor for our tropical cyclones in the last two years across the Mariana Islands. I would also think this would be this would be welcome news for our friends in the Air Force to do the uh, Operation Christmas drop and everything like that because you know smooth skies for those guys. Yeah they definitely want smooth skies and right now across central and eastern Micronesia it is not bad out there but it's just that ongoing monsoon across the western parts that they have to watch out for. Uh, moving right along, uh, we're going to skip past the joint type and warning slide and go right to our season surf. And I put a red box around the the wave outlook because this is the EPAN buoy showing the wave forecast for EPAN buoy. And again, this is an east-facing 
uh, shoreline. And so Guam blocks his buoy from a lot of the swell action from the Northwest. And so don't take this as fact that we're looking at six foot uh, seas because a lot of that west wave action, the Northwest wave action is being blocked by the island. So our sea forecasts are gonna be up a little bit from what this outlook is. So we're gonna be pushing hazardous sea conditions probably by Sunday with the Northwest swell building mm -hmm. in from that typhoon. So that's about eight to 10 foot combined sea. So keep that in mind if you have plans to be out on the waters later this weekend, those west and northwest swell will be building as well as the east and northeast trade wind swell. That will remain elevated. And the next slide, um, Santa's going to be making its <laughs> trip soon. Um, this is a, one of our weather service forecasters briefing Rudolph on conditions last year so he could have a safe weather uneventful flight. And so IDS or decision support services is what the weather service is about. And I've been excited to attend and represent the United States in the International Typhoon Committee Conference yesterday and today. And if you remember back in 2019, we hosted the Typhoon Committee here on Guam for the first time for their annual conference. And so that's going on yesterday and today. And I presented to the committee about the weather service decision support services, because that is what we're about, the communications, making sure people know exactly what to expect the impacts and how we can relay that information more accurately and consistency to people so they can understand what's going on out there. I love the and graphics so the too. That's ahead. actually one of my favorite Christmas uh, specials. <laughs> you know, I watched it so many times growing up and I have not seen it in several years. So I need to look for that on YouTube or something. One of these days. You know, so what, we're, we're happy ahead. to have you here on the island of Guam instead of like the island of Misfit Toys. <laughs> hey, there's always a place for Misfit Toys. So. <laughs> yeah, see, I, I go back a ways, man. I'm OG when it comes to that stuff. Yeah, I love those movies. Just pure classics. Hmm. Uh, the week ahead, not bad today. Mostly sunny and dry today and into Saturday. But we're going to have that surface trough come in, bring a few more showers Saturday night, Sunday, and then dry off to start the week next week. And so really not that bad for us. And I'll be back in two weeks. My brother will cover for me the next couple Mondays. All right. Well, well, we appreciate it. And you know what? We wish you safe travels and everything like that. You know, like uh, the Omicron variant, obviously a lot of people are paying attention to that. But um, have fun on the yeah. bayou, man. Get some of that gumbo. And we'll see you soon. I want shrimp. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Landon. Uh, 733 right here on the link. Uh, Friday, December 3rd. Let's go ahead and uh, go into this interview here. Uh, we kind of broke it on the show yesterday as a viral WhatsApp message.